So uh, you kind of started answering the question I was going to ask next. I'm, you know, one one of the things that my father always spoke about was there's the what so. Everybody knows what so. You know what needs to be done, but most people don't focus on the so what. Well, how do we get it done? What are you going to do about it? Um, you know, there's we're in a really interesting time where, you know, COVID kind of woke everybody up or woke a lot of people up to realize that they're not living the life that they want to live or they're not in the job that they want to you know, have or that maybe as a student, they look at their parents and they see where their parents are and they see what just happened to the parents and they want to make sure something's different. So how does somebody go, whether as a student um, or an adult who is maybe looking to transition out of his job or his career or break into a new industry, you know, in your opinion, your thoughts, your experience, how would you, how would somebody go about making that, you know, transition? We're talking about building relationships. So how do we either as a student who thinks, well, nobody's going to look at me, I'm just a teenager. um, How do they go about building those relationships or how do we go about building those relationships? How do we figure out, what parts of ongoing education we need in our lives um, so that we can then get to, to, you know, to the next step of whatever our life looks like. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, uh, that's a big question. I think, you know, for, for, a, I'll go to the learners, right. And especially younger learners that, that we've always missed. Um, you come out of school and you're a GPA, you're, you're a test score. Um, and then you have this ID number. Uh, and then that's really who you are. And I'm talking public school systems. There's some pretty cool, innovative schools out there. I know Yermi is going to start one here soon. Ha. <laughs> um, so, uh, but like, you know, we see these things and the, and the students then just focus on that, right? Um, they don't really care about the learning. We, we've unintentionally, or maybe even intentionally, um, really kind of guided students to look at that number. And if that number isn't big enough, we'll do anything and everything to get that number up, even staple $20 to the next step. Who knows? Uh, but, um, but it's kind of, it's crazy how we do that, right? Um, there's so many different reasons that that was way back when, but now I think one of the things that we do that we need to do is actually, that's why I'm the unlearning coach. I love to have students unlearn that, Mm -hmm. or even adults unlearn the fact that, you know, you're graded and you're, you have to stay in this box, um, to learn really what your, what your strengths and skills are. And then how do you attach those to something you're interested in? And, and many, many people have said this, like if, if, even if you're great at something, you may not like doing it. So you kind of have to connect uh, those things. So for me, honestly, and I, and I know I'm a little biased here, but that's why I work with spike view because it is a pre-professional platform where students are actually building their portfolio. They own what they're building. They own their mm-hmm. skills. And it's it's actually K through life. Um, it's built for yeah. that. Um, and also building a network and, and, and talking with people. I mean, I've learned so much uh, through Spike View. I've learned so much through LinkedIn. Um, obviously, we're here. Uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, we're at a lot of different places where we're conversating. And you know, it's it's a little less like social media e like just for entertainment. Um, I like to have students and, and adults in general really learn how to use social media and not be used by it, yeah. um, right. which I think is very, very important. And and, I, you know, if you identify your skills and strengths and there's been some great, time, you know, the strengths builders 2.0 and, and these things have been around. Um, but the job market right now is still kind of giggy and people are saying if, if I can keep you for two to five years, I've won. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so I think it's very interesting that, that people are looking to transition to really understand their skill sets, understand what they can and can't do. And don't worry about the things you can't do, but just identify those, right. um, identify, you know, what you're interested in and then start building. Cause honestly, knowledge is out there, right? Knowledge mm-hmm. is everywhere. Um, it's the old Jack Ma, like knowledge is everywhere. We we have to figure out how can we help people? Um, how can we lift each other up? And right. um, I think those are the starting places. But especially when in school, what I love to do, and kids will fight me on it because I teach at high school, and, and not intentionally, but they know it's very, it's so much easier to take a multiple choice test than it is to really self-reflect, mm-hmm. take a look at, you know, how empathetic are you? Uh, can you design things something? Um, can you work on a team with others? Um, because we have isolated 
each student into a grade. I always tell kids, you know, right. grades don't really pay bills, man. I've never mm -hmm. filled up the tank of my car with grades. I mean, yeah. you know, I need like mm -hmm. skills to actually earn some value to earn something to put in there. So, right. um, but yeah, I think in, in awesome. uh, that's the best I can put that, but we could go on and on. Oh, yeah. about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And one of the key problems that we found was that this, the, the employees were complaining that they didn't have an opportunity for growth within the company. And had they only had that ongoing education or skill building or something, they could reach that management level that is all of a sudden open. And instead of hiring somebody from the outside, they could have gotten promoted and they had a future in this company. Mm -hmm. um, and all it took was just that ongoing education. And so as I'm talking to the audience, I'm starting to notice exactly what you just said, that our our culture became very giggy and very like, especially now with the pandemic, 25% of employees have left their jobs. That is a huge number. One in four left their jobs, um, either quitting or middle of quitting, thinking of quitting, all these things. And so where did what did all these 25% people do? A huge number of them went and became entrepreneurs. And now they're, you know, stuck and they're trying to figure out life and they're trying to figure out how to do their business. And I'm done working for somebody. I'm doing my own thing now, you know. Um, and so we started talking to them because these were the people who were showing up to all my workshops that I was giving and all the talks I was doing. And so we started like really focusing on them. And one of the key components that we said is like, go get those skills, go get that ongoing yeah. education, go get that you know, forget it. it doesn't have to be university. It doesn't have, maybe it is, I don't know, but it doesn't have to be that. And I said, everything today is a Google search or a YouTube search away. There's a free course on something. There's a paid course on something. There's always a course for something. So go get the skill you need. And, and then, and then like also Dr. Terry over here in the comments was saying that networking. Yeah, so yeah. you're never going to know who you're going to meet and what you're going to learn from that person. I mean, just from meeting you, Peter, I learned so much yeah. and I've been in education for a while. You know, Baruch has been in education for a while, but just getting to know people like you, getting to know, we have another friend, Thomas Earp. We've, you know, he's taught us so much. Uh, Rick Davis, there's all these people that we meet through the networking. That is part of ongoing education. Right. Yeah. Everybody has something to teach us. Yeah. And, and that network is also, that's, that is a great, great mention in, in the comments and what you, con you mentioned there because- well, well, when we're youth, um, and I just did my latest podcast, uh, was around, you know, job shadowing, like y younger people really opening up, right? Like, you know, is it, is it the place of worship is not the only place that we do that. And in our own families, it should be everywhere, like in the schools and, and obviously in, in our communities as well. Um, I, I think a really healthy community is where youth are actually okay with interacting with adults and, and asking questions like, you know, why is that road like that? Or why do we not have a place to park our bikes? Um, and, and really to become engaged and empowering uh, people while they're talking and working with people from different generations. I call that a vertical network. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of our students, you know, they have and we do this in our own work kind of environment, our, our horizontal network or all the people around us kind of in the same area. Um, teachers usually hang out with teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. Salespeople usually hang out with salespeople. Um, there's always this weirdness between vertical, uh, you know, bosses and stuff. But I think if you eliminate that and you have like kind of a, a respect between that vertical network in any organization, and this is why I want my students to actually learn how to communicate with other older people, not just me, right? right? Um, and, and again, um, I just had a student email me uh, about flipping houses. And of course, every kid wants to be in real estate when real estate's good. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, he was actually having a real conversation with somebody who does it. And they, were, they sat him down over the weekend. And wow. this young man emailed me and said, thank you, you're teaching real skills not just like fluff, like I really got a lot of information out of this person. Mm, and wow. that's what's wonderful as well. So that networking is key. Yeah. 